Eternally Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On today's program, Reverend Mebby's message is titled, The Two Kingdoms, and our musical guests are the Seawork family. The river of God sets our feet up dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter. And we rejoice for the river is here. Thank you for tuning in to Eternally Yours Telecast. And thank you, Seaward family, for that anointed music. And now I have a message for you folks. It's about two kingdoms. Oh, I pray you're in the kingdom of God. There's two kingdoms on planet Earth, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God. Well, now, I don't have to persuade anyone. There's a lot of bad things happening down there, here. A lot of bad things. And that's from the kingdom of darkness. The enemy incites people. And, and we're born with a nature that has knowledge of good and evil. But when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, the Holy Spirit from God Almighty comes into your life. And God the Father transfers you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, Christ's kingdom. In the book of Colossians chapter 1, Verse 9 to 13, there's a powerful prayer. I encourage you to look at it, read it, even regularly. I do often myself. It's a prayer to know God's will. It's a prayer that uh, we would be strengthened with might by the Holy Spirit in our lives unto patience and joy and long-suffering and, and that God would uh, uh, just really help us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light, and that's another subject. But also, God said there, he delivered us from the power of darkness. That's from the kingdom of darkness. And he transferred us. He conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Every Christian out there, that you believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, and he did. He died for reason, our sins. He took our place, and he rose from the dead. You believe that, and you ask Jesus Christ sincerely, 
come in my life, Lord Jesus, even today, beloved. Just say, Lord Jesus, come in my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. And speak it out sincerely. Jesus Christ is my Lord. God the Father then will transfer you from the darkness kingdom into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. That's the kingdom I'm in. And I'm trusting and I'm really believing that you're in that kingdom as well, or you will be today. And you can call in and the person on the prayer line will help you know Jesus. But when God said in that prayer, beautiful, powerful prayer, Colossians 1, 9 to 13, when he said, I've delivered you from the power of darkness. Notice he didn't say he delivered us from all darkness because there's still darkness around and it tries to bother Christians. But the greater power, being in Christ's kingdom, being in Jesus Christ's lordship, and that's something we yield to on a regular basis, God has given us power and authority against the kingdom of darkness that's still on planet Earth. In other words, we're delivered from its power because the greater power has entered our lives, and that greater one is Christ the Lord. Amen. So I wanted to talk about that today. I want to talk about the people of God that are in Jesus Christ's kingdom. But I'm going to read Colossians 1, 9 to 13. I do have it memorized. Pray it often, honestly. But there it says, For this reason Paul prayed, he said, I pray and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Wow, that's a beautiful thing to pray. Because if you're in the center of God's will, beloved, you will be in the center of having God's strength to bring you through, even if it's a trying time. So being in the center of God's will is something that Christians love to be. You just kind of wake up and realize, wow, God knows best. <laughs> God who loves you, he knows best. And then it says you would be filled, the prayer is, Colossians 1, filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you will walk worthy of God. Indeed, we want to walk worthy of God. Don't you just want to be an example of a real true blue Christian like Jesus? I know you do. I know every person that has Christ in their heart, you want to be like Jesus. It just comes with being a Christian. Amen. So it says here, strengthen with all might according to God's glorious power. <laughs> and then it says, giving thanks to the Father who's qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So you can say in your prayers, and I do myself, thank you, Father. I'm sharing in the inheritance of the saints in light. And I think we could spend probably the rest of our days discovering that inheritance. I've been studying God's word over 40 years, and it still amazes me. Just said that recently to someone. It's like there's insights, and then you just get to know deeper and deeper glorious insights about God and his sweet word, holy word. So we're partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He's delivered us, verse 13, delivered us from the power of darkness, conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. Now, as I often say on the telecast, if you're in the market for a new Bible, I encourage you to get the Spirit-Filled Life Bible, Spirit-Filled Life Bible, edited by Jack Hayford. Because in that Bible, there's kingdom dynamics, word wealth, good concordance. And in the kingdom, kingdom dynamics, this is what it says. The message of the kingdom, the transference of the believer from under Satan's authority to Christ is described as movement into another kingdom. Ensuing verses ascribe Christ's redemption as bringing us to a place of completeness, that is, of spiritual adequacy, authority, ability to live victoriously. That's our inheritance as children of God. The ability to live victorious over the invisible power of darkness. Now it becomes functionally true when we, number one, live in love as citizens of the heavenly kingdom, and number two, utilize as kingdom currency. Hmm. 
Want to know what I believe kingdom currency is? I'll be sharing that shortly. You operate on planet Earth as ambassadors. I'll share about that as well. Authorized to offer kingdom peace and reconciliation to those who do not know Jesus. Serve as kingdom militia in the army of God. Did you know Christians were in an army? Oh, I think most of you know that. <laughs> we're in an army. We're in an overcoming army down here. We're enlisted for service. Have you ever stood to your feet after your morning devotions and clicked your feet together and said, reporting for duty, Jesus? <laughs> it's kind of like that. But Christ the Lord gives us the strength to battle in this army. We have weapons for, we have weapons for the fight. I have a spiritual warfare uh, DVD that if you need to know about the weapons for the warfare, you can surely order it. Hallelujah. But it's really a lot of basic things that may get into some of it, this message. We are to serve as kingdom militia, military, girded for prayerful conflict against the powers of darkness. We don't fight physically. We fight spiritually with spiritual powers. Remember what Jesus said in John 6, 63? Christ said, thank you, Lord. He said, my words are life and spirit. There's power in the word of God. If you look at Matthew chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, when Satan tempted Jesus in flesh and blood form as holy son of man, what did Jesus do? He quoted scripture. Three scriptures set the enemy to flight for a season. Those three scriptures, you look it up, those three scriptures dealt with lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. Those are the three things that bother us Christians the most. And so the terminology of the kingdom hosts, holds more, holds more than poetic pictures. It is practically applicable to all our living. You can apply kingdom power, kingdom currency, in your life as a Christian, it's part of your inheritance. So I want to go over those again. Hallelujah. First of all, it's so important. Yield to the Lordship of Jesus. Don't be a wishy-washy Christian. One day you're going to serve God fervently, red hot, and the next day you're out doing whatever. If you've got sin in your life, repent. Ask God to show you the way of escape. But remember, for those sins, he died. And when you repent, he washes you whiter than snow. So be in Christ's Lordship because 2 Corinthians 1, verse 20, 2 Corinthians 1, verse 20 says, All the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ. So the more that Christ is formed in you and me, the more we walk in the Lordship of Christ, the more the promises of blessing from Genesis to Revelations in Christ will be yea and amen, which means they'll be manifest. Now, if you folks out there have been praying for family members for years and decades, I got some like that in my family, and you're not seeing big changes yet, just keep a believing, keep a believing, keep a believing. Don't let doubt or worry creep in because they're not your workmanship or mine, my family. They're God's workmanship, and he can be working more undercover than you ever knew. I remember well, when someone was having a lot of trouble as a family member, certainly not acting a whole lot, in my opinion, like Jesus. So then someone, a wise counselor, said to me, now how do you know? Maybe in the, that person's heart of hearts are crying unto God for help. So I mentioned that to this person who's kind of almost a hard nut for God to crack. <laughs> and you know what that person said? That's right. I was astonished. My goodness. God can be working on them more than you know. And also, remember Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, that says, through faith and patience, you inherit the promises personally and perhaps outwardly as well in our prayers. So the promises are yea and amen in the Lordship of Christ in his kingdom. I love that promise. And remember in 2 Peter 1 verse 4, 
and most of you Christians would know this, it says, by the exceeding great promises, we are partakers of Christ's nature. Wow. So you see how important it is for those promises to be fulfilled in our lives and for us to keep a believing for them? Well, the whole Christian walk is a whole lot of trust and believe, trust and believe, trust and believe. <laughs> and don't lose your joy, folks. I know life can cause troubles. But don't lose your joy. If you feel like your joy is slipping, ask Jesus to restore that joy because it gives you strength to cope with life. Try to develop even by the Holy Ghost. Ask for his help, a sense of humor. John 15 says, Jesus is divine. We are his branches. We get life-giving strength from Jesus Christ, his lordship reigning. I mean, if you lop off a branch from a tree, it dies. And Jesus, John 15 says, in John 15, look it up. It says, Jesus' joy he gives to us. And if we continue in his word, we will have our prayers answered. So continue in his word. And don't lose your joy. Amen. So in Christ, we can enjoy and we can experience the promises in Christ. Hallelujah. Completeness through all that Christ has done for us. Spiritual adequacy. Authority. Let's remember Luke 10, 19, where it says, God has given us Christians power and authority over all. Folks, all is all the power of darkness. Remember back to Colossians 1, 9 to 13, where it says that God Almighty has delivered us from the power of darkness. So that means we have power and authority over the power of darkness. So even though there's darkness in the world, there's sin, there's evil happening, we can have strength from God by the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and the Lordship of Christ that it will not, will not destroy us. No. For greater is he in you than he in the world. Who's the he? Christ in you. You know, we think Christ in you, hope of glory, but let's remember, that's God Almighty. Christ in you means God Almighty's inside you, Christians. Can he handle what's happening in your life? Of course he can. Of course he can. Hallelujah. So God has given us power and authority, ability to live victoriously over and above the invisible powers of darkness. And you know, in Colossians 3, 1 to 4, I love this, and I'm so praying that God make it more real and real. Here with your heart, dear ones, it says, if you are risen with Christ, set your affections on things above, for you are dead and your life is hid hid with Christ in Holy Father and Christ who is your life appear and you appear with him in glory. Those four verses, Colossians chapter 3, are amazingly filled with biblical truth. Now, how are you risen with Christ? How are you dead? Huh? You see, folks, and that's another message which will be on down the road over the next few weeks on this station and others later. The thing is that when it says I'm dead, that means that God Almighty, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 6, even when we were dead in sins, Christians, he raised us up together, made us sit together in that heavenly place together with Christ. So when it says that if you are risen with Christ, every Christian, believe it, pray it in, that you would experience it more. You are risen with Christ. Your old sinful nature you got from Adam and Eve is put to death with Christ. That's in Romans 6. It's in Galatians. It's in Romans 8. You, through the power of the Holy Spirit, put to death the deeds of the flesh that are old sinful nature, and you walk in your new nature, supernaturally. Now you say, what are you talking about? Pastor Audrey Mabley, how can you say I'm risen with Christ when my feet are planted here on planet Earth? Planet Earth? Yes. <laughs> it's by the Holy Spirit. Every Christian, myself included, I'm linked with my Lord Jesus. Oh, Savior, thank you. 
who is reigning in majesty. He reigns in majesty. And I'm linked with him by the Holy Spirit. And as John 17 prayer is answered, look it up, 20 to 24, where Jesus prayed we'd be one with the Father. And he prayed we would be where he is to behold his glory. So in that Colossians 3 words of promise, Verse 1 to 4, I'll say it again. It says, if you're risen with Christ, Christians believe that we are. You are dead. That's dead to your old sinful nature. You have a new life in Christ. Behold, if any person be in Christ, old things have passed away. All things have become new. A new nature came into us when we became Christians. And that nature love is what God loves. Hallelujah. That nature is like Jesus, but it needs to grow. You grow in the word, you grow when you pray, you grow when you hear the words, like you're hearing on Eternal Yours Telecast, today and beyond. And so you grow. So back to those words. If you're risen with Christ, you are dead. That's the understanding I just gave you in this telecast. Your life is hid. That's the part I really love, too. My life is hid with Christ in Holy Father, and Christ, who is my life, appear. And I appear with him in glory. And we're to go from glory to glory, and that's another message. Because Jesus said in the John 17 prayer, he gives us his glory. Hallelujah. So, what does that mean, you're hid with Christ? I believe it means this. The more Christ is formed in you and me, the more Satan will not be able to get at us to trouble us so. Because when he looks at us, he will see Jesus shining. Hallelujah. No wonder Paul labored Galatians 4.19 when he said, I labor till Christ be formed in my converts. <laughs> Christ formed in you, beloved Christians out there in television land. I look at you like a flock, extended flock. I pray for you. But most important, Christ prays for you, Romans 8. Holy Spirit prays for us. You're God's workmanship. Be in the word, be in prayer, be in praise. And remember you're citizens of heavenly kingdom. You were bought with a price. Hallelujah. So this, by blessed, by the way, the whole Christian walk, in my understanding, is done by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Asked to be filled with the Holy Spirit on a regular basis. We cannot live this Christian life in our own human strength. It's not strong enough. We have the world, we have the devil, we have that old sinful nature that got the death blow when we got saved, sometimes tries to rise up. But we can live in resurrection power through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. So I hope that I've given you a clue about being in the heavenly kingdom. Now what about heavenly currency? I did want to strike on that. Well, heavenly currency is God's word, the holy blood of Jesus, faith, praise. Um, but let's remember what Peter said in Acts 3, verse 6. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Now, when that fellow rose up and walked, I believe Peter was using heavenly currency. He was using the power that there is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty. Remember, you have authority to use the Lord's name in prayer, for life, for healing, for deliverance, for saving grace. Amen. Eternally Your Solution is entirely supported by interested viewers and listeners like you. With a donation of $20 or more, you may request a gift. Please prayerfully consider your role in supporting Eternally Yours Television. Thank you so much for watching the telecast. And now during a tender time, I want to mention something. When we are doing spiritual warfare with spiritual power, the word of God, the blood of Jesus, the 
power and authority God has given us. I, I want you to know it's really important to remind ourselves, you and me, that there is an army in the heavenly realm that we can call upon to fight for us. In Hebrews chapter 12, 22, God's word says, this is right from the word of God, we have come into Zion and the city of our God and in the company of so many angels, we couldn't count them. Pray that into your life, beloved ones. Pray it in for your families. I pray it this way. I ask God to send forth an army of angels, warring, protecting, fighting, ministering angels. And there's another blessing, too, that we can pray to lighten the load of our spiritual warfare that we do for ourselves and ministry call, personal lives, family, whatever we have need of, is uh, what God did for King Jehoshaphat, the second chapter 20, second Chronicles, chapter 21 to 30, where they fasted, they prayed, and they praised. And I encourage you to do all three in a measure and you don't have to go hard fast. I usually go down your type fast. Just give up something I like for a season, twice a year at least, uh, to, uh, to combat the evil of Halloween in October and also uh, for Resurrection Sunday in the spring. But King Jehoshaphat, he did those three things, him and his people, prayed, some fasting, and praise. And God said, the battle is the Lord's and the victory was theirs. So I want to, in coming to close, I want to pray for God's army to fight for us. Let's agree together. Father in heaven, I bow in my heart, knowing full well you hear and answer prayer. Almighty God, Lord of hosts, God of battles, I call upon you who fought for King Jehoshaphat. I ask you to fight for us, me and your children that have watched and joining in right now in this prayer. Send forth from the heavenly Zaba, I ask, multitudes of warring, protecting, fighting, ministering angels. So we have more help in the heavenly realm than we ever dreamed. We, I know you can do that, Father, and I ask for it, Lord. I ask you to avenge us, your children that are following you speedily. Jesus said you would. In Luke 18, 8. Almighty God, rend the heavens for us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we all say, Amen. If this telecast has ministered to you, would you please prayerfully consider becoming a financial partner that we may continue to reach out for God's glory? It would be wonderful to hear from you.